Okay, okay. What is up, everybody? Welcome to the first official Tuck and Sammy podcast. <laughs> this is crazy. Get closer to your mic. Can we want to. We want to hear the business here. Can you guys hear me? Hello. Hello. All right, I just want to start this off saying thank you to all the viewers out there who have supported us in the past, supported our crazy ideas, and always, you know, there's been a few thousand people, maybe more, who have just stood by every crazy thing that we've ever done, and we're so appreciative of that, and we want to share this new journey with you all. So this is going to be the official podcast channel from now on. And we encourage everybody to come over and subscribe. The name of the channel as it stands is Strange Occupations, um, but we're debating on it. We're thinking about calling the podcast... Coffee Before Claims. I think that's a good idea. Coffee Before Claims. So if we stick with it, this is going to be Coffee Before Claims, episode... Season one, episode one. What? 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 Just get even closer. You got to get closer. Do I have to get closer? Guys, so Finn is like... You know, my belly's big. I'm I'm pregnant. You can move this whole thing and then and then move that as well. No, I think this is good. Can you see it? I can see is it. Is the bar going up? Yeah, it's been I going think up. you guys can hear me. All right. So first and foremost, we want to start off with a huge thank you to our friend Brian B. Colt, longtime friend. He came over here and helped me set up this entire system. He claims he didn't do anything, but without him. We would not be in the boat that we're in right now. So thank you, B. Colt, yes, the boy. thank you, thank you. And without further ado, let's just get right into it. The first topic that we're going to do, which we think would be the most interesting, seeing as Finley is still in her mama's belly right now, and she <laughs> probably won't be come two weeks from now. So this whole podcast is going to be about pregnancy, and it's going to be about... <laughs> how pregnancy is and the real situations and issues that Sammy is facing during this battle to birth and grow Finley in her stomach and then just let her out. So, all right, just give us a rundown. How are you feeling today? I feel good today. My feet are swollen. They've been swollen most of the pregnancy, but like, I guess I was sitting on it weird earlier and like there was like an indent in my right foot and it was so crazy looking like it, I, that never happened so that was a little alarming and it was when I came in here so I was like maybe I should like I wasn't planning on having my feet up I don't know can they even tell I didn't look at the angle on it the was camera. a crater but it was a crater but I, I wasn't planning on having my feet up but I just figured that's the best thing to do because my piggies were looking crazy so I but for the most part I feel good if I took a pin off the wall here and just it looks like you could just pop your foot. No, yeah, that's see, that's creepy. And everybody who's like looked at my feet, they're like, "Oh wow, your feet are swollen." They go to touch my foot, my fat foot, and I'm like, "No, like don't do that." To pre- pe- pregnant people don't like that because like it, it's not like it hurt. For some people, it hurts. Sometimes it does feel a little uncomfortable and it hurts, but like it, it's it's just not right. Don't go to touch their fat foot, their swollen foot. It's just personally, I don't like it. I, I guess I can't speak for all <laughs> pregnant ladies, but. I need it's, a- it's not cool. Don't touch. Don't touch the feet. <laughs> Can I touch your feet? No, because like not even not even my husband. Because no, especially not you. You're not that gentle. All right. So I guess I would say going into it, uh, you'd have to start from the beginning of our relationship. But yeah, I mean the way that we met was very very unique. So I don't think it, it, that at, at all that we had any plans of dating getting married or having kids so all of those three things happened naturally and that's probably the best way but i will say straight up personally me i i never wanted to have kids never thought that i was going to have kids and now that's all i think about now it's everything in our life has been transformed and totally recalculated around the arrival of our baby as it should be but i think naturally just going from not ha- not thinking about it having kids ever to now about to be having our first child that it's such an adventure um to go from one extreme to the other because that's basically all i think about now no that is crazy because i 
never thought I'd ever even get married, let alone be pregnant and having a baby girl. So it is, I don't know. It's mind blowing. And I, I just, I was telling Turner the other day that this happened so cool. I was like, it, I'm literally <laughs> about to give birth within the next two or three weeks. And I, it's still mind blowing that I have a human growing in me. Like everything just went so fast. Like everything's been a blur. Um, I don't know if other people can relate with that, but it's just, I maybe because of the specific lifestyle we live and our career choice that we're always doing different things. It's not really a steady, consistent routine that we do every day. So it's, I don't know. It's, I don't know if anybody else can relate with that, but it's just been a blur and it's crazy. But my perspective is different than it used to be. Were you ever, so I don't know this at all. So this is a straight up question from, for me and for everybody. Were you ever like one of those girls when you were a kid that had like baby dolls put them in strollers and carried them around was like i want to be a mom knew. i already knew what you were about to say that's crazy no because there's girls out there that are like you know 10 years old whatever even younger who are like i want to have kids like i love baby dolls and like they take care of them and like feed them as if that's their child and then like later they're like i've always wanted kids no you know and you know why i think that is that's crazy i th i'm just gonna assume um because I didn't really have, like, a mother figure in my life. I think a lot of girls who would do stuff like that and have baby dolls and, you know, roll them around in a stroller and want kids most likely had uh, a mom in, in their life. That was a constant, I guess I should say. I didn't really have that. I was raised by my dad, so... I had stuffed animals. I did. I was really, really attached to stuffed animals. I mean, you already know that, but now you guys know. So stuffed animals were your babies? Animals, yeah. How about cats? Cats were always, you know, an obsession of mine. But I think it's <laughs> a super cool transition, too, because we're not really able as a couple to go out to all the auctions or buy storage units or go as hard on certain things like going on trips, like how we went to the Mothman and all that uh, in the last few months. And we've been making consistent content and I've actually been very, my mind has been more organized and oriented towards continuously just producing content no matter what it is. And I see such a strong following just attaching to everything that we do, no matter what it is from, you know, getting a cup of coffee at the local Sydney's place that we've never been and laughing about it, that how long it took to get a coffee or, you know, buying stuff at the yard sale, not even to resell, just to laugh about and literally just sitting, sitting back here talking, you know, filming and just filming everything that we do. And I just, I do want to thank everybody that has been watching throughout the pregnancy from the bottom of my heart that without you guys, we wouldn't be able to continue living the beautiful life that we have because without the viewers and without all the people watching, we would not make any money because our main source of income now is YouTube revenue. And that is a little bit scary because who knows the future of YouTube and our channel and this channel. And this is why we're doing a whole nother channel because why not? Uh, at this point, it's turning into more of a career than a hobby. But yeah, just thank you, everybody. Yes, it, it's been a really you. epic journey so far and uh, we can't wait to film finley coming and and the coming days well we I mean not her coming but i thought about that but then i was like even when i get like little like braxton hicks contractions whatever you want to call it i don't even know if that's what they are but whenever i get uncomfortable down there i i can feel myself making crazy faces so i'm just like <laughs> we should like even film me giving birth because that was like an idea not to like show anything private but like from behind you know who wants the live pregnancy the live birth <laughs> video Hit that thumbs up button if you guys want that. I, mean, I know maybe. I do. I mean, I don't really care, but it's just like, I don't know. I'm a big baby when it comes to pain. Ooh. And I know that she's going to be fine. I'm more worried about myself um, giving birth. Like, that's what I'm more scared of. I know Finn's good. She's going to be good. But me, on the other hand, I don't know. So. Okay. So this is an interesting thing. Um, I'm not going to speak for you, but obviously... 
a, a lot of people that watch our channel know that Sammy has battled with anxiety and some depression in her life. Uh, how do you see the transformation from before you were pregnant and how you looked or your weight then to now? So before, so I was really, really tiny, obviously. We both knew that. Most of you probably knew that. Obviously, you saw the videos. Mm. But I think it might look, it comes up, everything comes up different on camera too because the camera does add 10 pounds, especially when you use a wide angle all the time like this guy. But Love before <laughs> before I was pregnant, um, I was super underweight. I was literally like 100 pounds. I might have been 98 at one point, and that's not a normal weight for me. I'm 5'2". A normal weight for me is like 130. I'm 180 right now, like 178. But it, So you doubled your body weight. I doubled my body weight. And I'm like, you did it, but almost. No, but almost. And honestly, uh, it's not like I was unhappy when I was underweight before I got pregnant. But it's weird because I wasn't as happy with myself as I am now, which I, I guess a lot of people would think that was weird. Um, and I'm always confident with whatever weight I am because I know at the end of the day, and this is just from, you know, experiences in life and just growing as a human it's really not about your weight or what you look like how old you are how young you are how pretty you are how ugly you are it's about how you feel about yourself as a person inside that's really 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 important um and i'm grateful that i picked up on that early enough in life it's not like i'm young but a lot of people really obsess over how they look. And I'm not going to sit here and lie and say that I don't care about how I look. I do, but, you know, most of my confidence comes from within. And that's something that I think is really, really important. But do you think that has to do with uh, just being like settled in your life and being okay with what you have? Instead Absolutely. of always looking forward to something else, something new, oh, I can't wait for the new house, the new car this new upgrade, this job, you know, upgrade, whatever it is, a lot of people are searching for something that they might not even really want, but that society just makes them think that they want it so bad that they can't be happy with their life because they're always pushing for something more. No, society definitely conditions you at a very young age, like literally like right out the womb, um, to think that you need certain things to be happy or you need to have this and be this status in life to be important or whatever word I'm looking for, but that's not the truth. Um, and we were talking about this earlier. I don't know if this even did twides with this, but I was saying that I guess like when you go through things in life, um, you like, you know, rough things in life, you end up, having a different type of gratitude than people who haven't really lost anything that detrimental to them. Um, it usually takes people to get sick uh, in life or just until they're 80 to understand what's actually important in life. And I'm just grateful that both of us know what's important in life. And yeah, everybody gets caught up. It helps that we're able to express ourselves, though. On, yeah. It in, in a lot of ways, because that was always a big thing for me growing up, and my parents encouraged me and my my brothers and sister to always express ourselves, and a lot of the ways we did that was always through video and stunts for a long time, but now I don't necessarily need that, any stunts anymore or, or any of that. I, I just, I don't know. I think it's about kind of how you're raised, too, because yeah. I, I feel like your dad isn't one of those people that would always be like he just living like a modest blue collar life and he gave he gave you those values and morals, like yeah. to have this is enough yeah. you know what i mean uh, yeah we i never had like money growing up or anything like that so and honestly my dad know. and my mom together as a team have built a pretty like a good 
wealth behind them. But the reality is there was never an A to Z type situation. My dad worked so hard his whole life, and I saw that every day and experienced it. And he would take me to work, and I worked for him for years when I was like a teenager. So when you earn something, you're more okay with having less. Even though we do live a really, really good life. So I can't say we don't have a lot, but like... But we work, We uh, despite what anybody sees on film or anything, we do work really, really hard to be able to live a life where we can be with each other all the time and do literally most of what we want every single day. And also having butters. Wow. But but. But yeah, I, I mean, this is straying a little off. I mean, it definitely <laughs> tells a lot about us to to people watching, so... It's cool, but let's get back to the uh, the hemorrhoids. <laughs> First off, it was one hemorrhoid, and his name is Harry. Was Harry? He's not here anymore. The other day, I took- everybody welcome Harry the hemorrhoid to the show. Are you gonna bust him out? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's gone. But yo, he ain't gone for the last time. And then maybe not for the last time, but I got Tuck's cooling pad. He came know, down for July 4th weekend, baby. <laughs> he really did, though. <laughs> he was like, shit. I'm going down the shore for the weekend. <laughs> I'm going to the fucking beach. He was talking to the other hemorrhoids <laughs> in there like, yo, what you all doing for the weekend? Ah, uh, damn. Jimmy and Tony ain't show up. <laughs> it's just me, I guess. <laughs> all right. But, all right. I, t- I, was taking a, I was taking a poop the other day. And I had my phone. I usually don't have my phone on me. And, you know. I was, I ended up getting stuck on it. So I was already done pooping, right? So I was just sitting on the toilet on my phone. Oh, you do that too? No, I always make fun of Turner for doing that. She mocks me for doing that and then does it I do because when I have to pee, you know, Finley's literally pressing on my bladder. So sometimes he's just sitting in there for like 25 minutes. I'm like, you good? Like open the window. I got to pee. So I was uh, clearly being a hypocrite and I was doing it. (laughs) And uh, (laughs) I started out the sun. Like a butthole light bulb went off in my head. I was like, oh shit, what's that feeling in my butthole? <laughs> it felt like it was inside out. So I put my phone down and I knew automatically that I messed up. So I waddled out of the bathroom with my panties down, spread my butt cheeks open, <laughs> looked in the mirror, <laughs> and there was Harry, the hemorrhoid. And I was like, oh my fucking God. This is what it looked like. You know, my when first you're, hemorrhoid. you're like a kid and you, uh, <laughs> you're like, you, well, we used to go to CVS. And grab like we would actually steal them because like our we <laughs> the water balloons we oh, bought them too awesome. but that's what it looked like like filling up a water balloon at the hose like your average is just that's I'm like a, like you could pop it like it was just like a big bubble but it was actually like smooth it wasn't like it's all a, grotesque looking like I thought it would I think they're all smooth I don't know I'm sure everybody's hemorrhoids different but Harry he was a smooth hemorrhoid whatever. So Turner, I showed Turner, and his reaction was just like, are you okay? Like, do you need to go to the hospital? And I'm just thinking, oh, my God, please don't act like this when I'm giving birth. Like, just act like everything's good. Don't freak out. It was out. like there was like just a partial piece of hot dog coming out of your butt. That's so freaking gross. But it went away within an hour, and I actually had an OBGYN appointment that same day, later on in the day, and I asked my doctor if it was okay. And he was claiming, yeah, like, that that happens if it's not like a serious case like it'll just go away so maybe i don't know maybe i have a magical butthole that just you know maybe a hemorrhoid will pop up because it didn't hurt once you get them though i don't think they go away forever what are you talking about i'm just i'm just saying what i've heard from people i'm gonna have to google that because that's not cool google what you want i'm telling you what it is you know what if that's the worst thing in life like i said the other day like (laughs) No, it was the other night I turned over to Turner. He was laying next to me, and we're about to go to bed, and I was like, you know, there's way... Because, you know, I am nervous about giving birth the pain, but I told him, what did I say to you? Do you remember the exact words I said? I turned over to him, and I was like, if giving birth to Finley is, like, the worst pain... Sadly, it's not going to be. ...that I feel, then that's okay, but that's what I said, though. I said, I know it's not going to be. You know what I mean? That's the giving birth isn't going to be the worst pain that I feel in life. So it's okay. That's what I got to think about because there's going to be a, a lot of losses in life. Sorry to make this really grim, but I just want to be honest so people understand 
that perspective because it does kind of make things easier <laughs> as sad as that sounds like uh, we're I'm going to experience a lot more pain in life than giving birth and this pain is a happy pain so I think I try and remind the, myself uh, of that the pregnancy and I'm sure this is also true for a lot of people and it makes you reflect on uh what's actually important and slow down your life and slow it back and bring it back to reality. And it's a way for naturally you to smell the roses of life because everybody's on a hamster wheel. We talk about this in our videos. No matter if you work for yourself, if you work for somebody else, or if you don't even work at all, you're always going to be on a hamster wheel because if you don't work at all, it's the worst because you don't have any money. So you have to continuously every day try to do something to get food or to get whatever. But this kind of brings you back down and lets you realize like life is going to pass you by whether you just continuously don't think about your life and just keep going on the hamster wheel or if you slow down and appreciate life, both ways time's, time's going to pass. You can't stop time. So it is a good way to be like, center you, and be like, what am I trying to do with this life? And for me, it's helped me, I don't want to give too much away, but we're developing something that's really, really important to me. And we have been since April 17th, I think was the very first message. But that product probably wouldn't have happened without the pregnancy because I wouldn't have come back down. And I've also been thinking so much about, bam, what we got going here and how important this can be for us and also our brand. Although I haven't done many things to actually produce the items, my mind has been going a million miles an hour and we are going to, in the next five years, go from what we have right now, which also thank you everybody for ordering stuff from the 4th of July sale. Uh, we sold like 70 items, so that is so epic. And our and to have our brand represented by all those people is the most important thing. But I think in five years, we'll have a legitimate clothing line. And the brand, and it's, it's let me realize the brand, who we are, what we stand for, is more important than anything else. You can make a million YouTube videos that get a million views. If you don't stand behind anything and your values are wrong, none of it matters. So that's what I've realized a lot from the pregnancy and actually stand by your values like practice what you preach because that's something that um we're both proud of like we actually are the people that we portray online we're and actually acting like good people <laughs> the one thing i will say is off camera i curse a lot more but i only do that <laughs> i only that's a little bit fake but i wouldn't even call it fake but I do that be for the viewers, for people so they can watch these videos with their five-year-old son. I think this channel might be a little less PG than the other channel, just because some of the topics that come up might be a little little more like real than just like daily life. But a little grown. Uh, you have to critique yourself a little bit to be in the public eye all the time. But to stay true to yourself and your values is so important. And there's so many frauds online. There's so many fake people. I'm talking to you whoever's watching they people you know who you are the the <laughs> the follower buyers the view buyers people just buying instagram followers people uh using those dumb ass sites to critique their channel and make the views go up in the first day so that it looks real and it's like oh my gosh this guy's blowing up but really he just bought all his views i f hate that about the internet but the reality is i would take a hundred real views any day over a million fake ones, no matter what other people think of you. Because what you think of yourself is so much more important. And you know that those hundred viewers are real and you know that those million viewers are fake. That's the type of people I'm, I was talking about though, kind of in a roundabout way. Cause like, it's really sad that people feel the need to do that, to buy views, to buy followers because it's like, what, what does that do for them? It's like a temporary fix almost like like you want people to think that a lot of people follow you for what? Cuz the clout of social media is now a drug. And that's the problem. That's disturbing. Yeah, but there's you got to think about it like uh why do so many people 
take diet pills. Why do so many people look up, research, and try get rich quick schemes? Touche. Because they want the fast. They don't want the work. That's true. They want to they produce... just get there really quick without putting in the work. But when you put in the work and you you know you go through the struggles, it does build a lot more character. And you know, for people like us who put in the work and go through the struggles and then put that online for everybody to see and criticize and make fun of whatever it's a slap in the face when people who buy followers and buy viewers and buy this buy that to make it look like they they worked hard so that they can get you know the the respect or the clout whatever you want to fucking call it it's a slap in the face because it's like people eat that up they a lot of you i'm sure don't even know that Half half some the, of the people that you even watch on half YouTube the channels, or if follow not, are fake. I would say 50% of the channels that everybody that's watching this video watches, up to 90% have either bought subscribers, bought views, likes, comments, um, or followers on Facebook, Instagram, all the other platforms you can buy them on too. But for us, it's all about YouTube. Um, yet we both do have... Instagram accounts that are just reflecting like a real Instagram account. Like they're just regular. I have Instagrams. we both have less than fifteen thousand followers on Instagram, but we have a hundred and forty two thousand on on YouTube. It's just it shows you how unrealistic other people's platforms really are. But that, that's not even really important. Uh, other other people's there? stuff isn't important, <laughs> but it does give people a, a false. Um, reality of how hard it actually is to grow an audience but then the people that have tried which a lot of people have done it that watch our videos too and they see how hard it is all right this is a pretty good time to do a shout out here to exter so you guys saw uh we've done this this is this is a, okay so we do have one video where we did a podcast test with me and b Cole. That is not an official episode. This is going to be our first official podcast episode, episode one. So I thought that it was really cool to... The first company that ever paid us to endorse their product was Exter. Exter wallets, and they make laptop cases, and they make RFID chips, basically, that you can put in your wallet. You could throw it in your duffel bag, but it allows you to find your wallet or any other thing that that chip is in with your phone. So if you lose it, you can find it. But here it is. This is the wallet. We're going to be giving this wallet away today on this podcast. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel and leave a comment, and you're in the runnings to win this. It is an Exter Parliament Napa Black uh, wallet. I'm not going to take it out of here because the excitement of opening it is probably better, but they are sponsoring this episode, so thank you, Exter. You for the dream, and we're looking to get some more sponsorships for other episodes, so... If you have a product that you want to sponsor one of our episodes with, go right ahead, send us an email. <laughs> I can put the email in the description of this too, but a lot of people watching probably already know. But yeah, extra. And yeah, cut to this clip of me just using my Epic laptop case. All right, we just had to do that because without uh, the support of companies brands and other people we would have nothing so we always want to show support to the people that support us and allow us to live what we consider our dream but let's get let's get going on this mm -hmm. tell us some uh trials and errors of being pregnant like how it feels to go to the grocery store <laughs> yeah because i still go to the grocery store i know <laughs> so well when the little uh electric carts Oh, so you're one of those. You know I'm one of those. I know, but they don't. Some of you might. They might have seen it in a video once. When they have the electric carts actually charged in stores, as it's okay. It's nice, but they never do. Only sometimes. They rarely have them charged. Because people, and if anybody's watching that does this, when you're done using the electric cart, plug, plug it, it back in. in. Plug it in. For the rest of the people that want to use it, you know? Just and also for the people that literally person. cannot go in the store without it. Because obviously your back was hurting really bad for a while. Yeah, I don't necessarily need but it. But you now. could physically, in pain, walk the store. You did yes. it last night. 
Yes. The cart was not charged last night, so we went Neither and got a few more. things. So she walked around the whole store. But for people who literally cannot do that it's because mean. of disabilities, that is so dumb of somebody to not plug the cart back in. And even the guy behind saying. us was like, my mom needs the cart and they're never charged. So she doesn't even want to come in the store. That's, that's messed sad. up. Although if you go to Boscov's, you can rent a wheelchair. <laughs> Boscov's. <laughs> Boscov's. Uh, who goes to Boscov's? We do. But I when you go, there. if you go upstairs to where they, like they gift wrap for oh. you, <laughs> it's so nineties. Um, you can get a, you can get a wheelchair. You can rent it out. You got to sign in. You got to sign your soul over. Sign there. in, sign the date <laughs> and time, and then you get a wheelchair, and you can push around anyone you want in it. Yeah, so I did that. I done did that. You're sweating more than me. I mean, it's... We got this Arctic Air thing. Oh, yeah. From Home Depot. It's like great. $39.99, and it literally doesn't work, so... It does. No, it does not. It's not doing anything? I don't feel a damn thing. Wow. It's just dripping all over the floor. It's like this little box. You put ice cubes in it? <laughs> and water. It's basically like a fog machine for air. It's supposed to just be for a small space, but this is a small space. How much smaller can it get? It's supposed to be literally for your desk and then your face right here, two Dude, feet you away. You have that stuff dripping all over your desk. That's crazy. Yeah, because you I could just put like, like a little pan underneath of it. Like how an AC unit would have. That All right. Sucks. How's your appetite been since you got pregnant? <laughs> like I was saying, <laughs> I was like a hundo pounds before I got pregnant, which was underweight. But my appetite, like in the beginning, I I mean, I crave pickles like not pregnant too. So, But I did crave pickles a little bit more than I usually did. That's cliche. But steak... I was eating a lot of organic steak, a lot of meat. Um, so Finley likes meat. Finley's a meat eater, yes. I mean, um, she clearly needed something in the meat, which was iron, because I ended up finding out that I was anemic, which happens a lot when people get pregnant. So I take an extra iron pill on top of the prenatal that I take every morning, but nothing crazy. I I just eat a lot more. Steakums? And I, f I think I... Yeah, steakums, which are not good for you. Don't judge me, but it happened, and it happens sometimes. <laughs> but it, uh, I don't know. I started eating a lot more. And all your meals. Before, she would just eat, like, a couple bites and be like, oh, I ate everything. Yeah, I had uh, bad anxiety. I still have anxiety, but it's, it's weird because it's not as bad as it was. Um, and I do think that played a role in how skinny I actually was. Before I got pregnant, like, I just didn't have an appetite. Um, I wasn't, like, what's it called? It's not bulimic. What's the other one? Just, I would call it just... Anorexic, that's like the Like, anxiety-induced. I wasn't, uh, it wasn't like I, like, I had an issue. It was just I literally wasn't, I had no appetite from... And that's another thing, too, though. My untreated anxiety. That was a big part of it, but also it was the... the get up and go mentality that we had had for like the last five years. Whereas once you got pregnant, we still did like our Florida trip and that was awesome. But at the same time, we, we haven't been get up and go. We've been like sitting back and being like, what's the most important thing to do for our health for, for to continue. And no, I think that true. plays a big part in it. Yeah. Cause we were like, uh, just always on the go. And I, I think, we were both subconsciously aware of that as we were doing it and knew it wasn't the healthiest way for us to be, but that's what we needed to do at the time to grow what we needed to grow in our business. So whatever, I took that loss of weight, and I'm sure you took losses too, mentally and stress-wise. So I always say this, like I feel like Finley really did like save my life because once I got pregnant... Well, I was I was also smoking a jewel. I don't know if a lot of you knew that. Um, I smoked nicotine, so it was a jewel. Like they don't sell, they they're illegal now, right? I was oh, a they vape out, smoker. They outlawed jewels. I was a freaking in, in vape New, smoker. Uh, the state of New Jersey, if you guys didn't know, not that we care. 
the only Not thing anymore. that I would be smoking is a joint, not yeah. a jewel, <laughs> yes, <laughs> ever in the rest of my life. Yes, he would. But keep, I, I smoked keep, a jewel. So save your lungs though, for that, the good that, stuff. That, that had me gain weight too, though, because when you smoke nicotine, like it does, I think the jewel, just nicotine in general, uh, obviously messes you up internally. Um, obviously, it causes cancer too. But I think it was giving me. It was like adding on to my anxiety. I do think, though, uh, to get to where you want to be, you got to go through trial and error. Because uh, I had like this, this grand, like view of myself as like somebody who's going to become a reseller for a living. <laughs> and when we got the pregnancy going, I realized that that's not at the heart of our business it, it really is that was holding me back and i'm not saying that going out to a flea market going to a thrift store going to a yard sale and buying things to sell again for more profit is a bad thing in any way but for us to spend more time focusing on the editing and just producing videos about us and no specific topic is so much more important than trying to jump on a bandwagon um, in hopes that, you know, like, oh, this this will sell for this much, and also the video will probably do well because people will be so amazed by what we got. But that's not it for me. I, I, I'm so glad hats, you came to that hats reali off, realization. Hats off. The <laughs> problem is it's so much work and so much computer work that it was taking away from... Our actual merchandise that our The brand. heart of what we actually are, which is a content creation couple. Oh, yeah, but I'm, and also it's just like, why would we sell clothes and instead of focusing, like we were doing all of it. Trying so why to, but we it, just trying sell to do our own merchandise. And trying to do so many things too much took food, away from the things that matters the most. Um, and I'm still going to go to auctions and buy stuff and buy storage units, but it's just going to be a different way of doing it. Um, and I'm not just going to be like buying anything. I still love like vintage clothes, but. That's buying more of a any, hobby. Any, buying anything that you th like can find a comp on eBay, and just buying anything is it's so it's so much to put in your mind. Like having all those different items, um, you have to niche yourself out and realize what you need to be doing for yourself. Like either do clothes or either do vintage electronics or either do vintage video games. And a lot of people do do this like this or do vinyl records, but don't do all of it because it's too much for like your plate to handle unless you have you know a team of people that are listing it and selling it for you then go ahead but um i think at the heart of what we do best as a couple is produce uh just content no matter what it is and try to spice it up with just you know new and interesting funny things um or new like things like electric bikes or electric skateboards Things that a lot of people might not have seen or, or used. Because like up until we got our first electric skateboard, I had never used one before that. Sammy had never used one before that. So it was new to us, and it was also new to our viewers. So I think things like that um, are super cool. I never claimed we were resellers. I remember a while back I made a video. I was saying that it's just something that we like to do. Go no, but like I... Stuff. You Resell have... It. Like almost anybody has the opportunity to build... To make a living off of reselling. A good living? Yeah, I, yeah. I do think that. If that's all you do. I think that that if would that's be hard. All, as, if that's literally all you do. And you well, no, because life. if I spent the same amount of time listing items on eBay as I do editing, our eBay would be bananas. This is true, but you wouldn't. But I spend do... five hours a day editing sometimes. Yeah. Eight hours a day on the computer doing other, like editing and doing. My ass hurts. Is it sweaty? My ass? No, surprisingly, but you're. My ass is like a river right now. Well, that's unfortunate. Maybe, maybe it is working. We should do know. something where like, I just sit in here with the heater on, <laughs> and I'll just sit up it on like, like a, a thing here, and guys. let my butt drip into a cup, and then you can drink it, and we'll see how it tastes. Would you do a stunt like that? Let me throw up. Just please stop. <laughs> that is so nasty. Yeah, Ew. but what do you mean? <laughs> How about I do that? <laughs> I would drink. I don't it. know if I see. I, you sweat a lot. I'm a booty hole troll, I so sweat. I don't booty mind hole it. Troll, just like butt butt. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you gonna do tomorrow? Tomorrow is 
My barbecue baby shower. And it's going to pour all day. It's going to pour all day. It was a, like a last minute thing, the baby shower. And like I had my aunts were supposed to throw me a baby shower. Now, to be honest, they got into a fight about something and my one aunt's going through some stuff. So that ended up not happening. And it was going to be at her house and everything. And usually when you have a baby shower, you don't really do anything yourself. You don't you kind of just show up. But now it's different. We're going to have it at our house. Which obviously um, you guys know our, the inside of our house is pretty small. It's like a, a very modest home. So yeah. having like 30, 40 people at your house it's inside is not, it's not even doable. So we have to set up the back porch. I'm going to break down all this stuff after this and put it away and then set this up with a tent out front and hopefully take the scrap to the scrap yard. It'll be good though. It should be exciting. I mean, you guys know our is like... It, it's just, it is what it is. It'll be what it is. I'm excited either way. Me too. It's more so for Finley. So that when she gets older, she's like, yeah, my mom had a baby shower for me. Because, like, I don't, it's not like I really need one. But I feel like it's the normal thing to do. So we're doing it. We got to get some balloons. This and that. Some we have pink some balloons. We have the Leanne printers. That we got two more of them in the mail. And we're going to set them up. Mm -hmm. so that we can that people can take pictures on their phones and then just print out a photo from the baby shower tomorrow on the spot that that's a good idea we should put we should type up a, like instructions too and just put it next to the printer so what that, has been your heaviest most difficult part of the pregnancy so far not being able to thoroughly clean the way that I like to being somebody with a little bit of OCD that's really it um and I mean the sleeping has gotten worse not like worse but like it's hard to because you're trying to like protect this water bubble and your baby when you're you know turning and you're trying to get comfortable to sleep but that's not really crazy to me. It's the not being able to do certain things. That you were able to do before. Daily, yeah. It's not, And I still do them. It just takes me a little longer because I have to be a little bit more cautious and careful. Um, and then there's just certain things that I, I straight up don't do because I'm like, I don't want to risk it. You yeah, know? it's. I mean, it's been harder for me too because I never... It's not that I didn't realize how much you did in everything, but now it's like, especially now when like you just can't really do anything physical like what we used to do. Yeah. M losing a business partner physically <laughs> is crazy because like we couldn't even pick up half the stuff. Like when we went trash picking with Mark from Holland. Yeah. It was like that was the first time in months that I could even pick up a girl and put it in the car because I'm yeah. not like I'm not going to hurt myself over a girl. So like no. back before though, we used to just be like, we can get anything. We can get this done. We can clean out this house. We don't even need any employees or anybody helping us because we're, we're just going hard like beast mode. But then when it all came down to it, it was like, well, Sammy puts up so much on her end that it's like almost like we can't do certain things anymore as a team. No, yeah, and that kind of, that was a hard thing too. It still is hard because like I have this like weird uh, guilt, guilty feeling that I'm not like doing enough because I, I can't um, just to protect Finley. So it's like I don't like not being able to like do certain things because I, I like being a teammate. <laughs> like I like being a partner. Also, that like, I mean, we're not like world travelers or anything, but being able to like get in the truck and just go like two hours away, three hours away, That's has hard. come to a halt. Basically, the last trip we really did was to the Hamptons, and the whole like hour and a half once we got on the Long Island from there to the Hamptons was just like, oh, and so she mad. was camera. like freaking out because like her stomach was bumping and there's literally nothing that i could do about it and also the trailer was attached so it was just making it worse oh. no i had no idea that that road was like that uh if you live in and drive in long island new york every day 
bless your soul, because it's a crazy ass road. <laughs> I mean, at least they have that road. At least they have a highway going through there, so you can't complain all that much. Yeah, but I had no idea. I'd never driven on that road since I was like eight years old, and clearly I wasn't the one driving. I haven't been to the Hamptons for so long since I was a kid. I had no idea. But things like that, you just can't do. Like you can't put yourself in situations like that when you're pregnant. It's just it's not fair. And I was mad at you. And also you have to pee like every four hours, like four minutes, not hours. <laughs> I was mad at you too, but the, you know, at the end of the day, it's not like you knew. Well, I mean, I knew it was a little further than I said it was. He did lie about, you know, I catch him in lies. I know this happens with husbands and wives all the time, boyfriends, girlfriends, whatever. Like he was trying to act like he didn't know how, at, he told me that it was way <laughs> shorter of a distance than it actually was. And so we were like two hours in. He's like, oh yeah, four hours, not two and I was like, no, what? No, because when I looked at it at night, Google gives you the updated status. So it said like two hours and 40 minutes. So I was like, yeah, it's about two hours away. Did he not just say before this that he knew? That it was more than two hours, yeah. But I didn't know it was four and a half. I wouldn't even have gone so it. Yeah, it because once the traffic came onto the Google map, all of a sudden the time went up. Because we were traveling during the day, not at night. Either way, the bumpy road was not your fault. I was mad at him anyway, because who else was I going to be mad at? The bumpy? The bumpy was just isn't, making me so mad. Isn't life but a bumpy road? Yeah. <laughs> or no. Yeah. I do think, though, that that we alone shouldn't necessarily be all inspiring to people, but I do think that setting up this and just going for it should inspire other people. There's somebody out there that might see this video that probably is seeing this video, somebody out there that has the possibility of creating a more successful podcast than we do ourselves. And you never know who the next big creator of any kind of content could be unless you try. So I think that, yes, we spent some decent amount of money on this setup, and not everybody really maybe is in a position to do that. But I do think if you've been dwelling on an idea in your head, whether it be to start a podcast, which probably it's not, whether it be to start a YouTube channel, which it could be on any different topic, whether it be to start a business or open a restaurant. I don't know about that. After watching Gordon Ramsay, restaurants seem a little hard. But <laughs> open up you know, a coffee shop or a bakery, if that's your dream, I don't see why you would ever want to live your life wanting to do something really badly and not putting in the first step of doing it. Um what is the term that I could even use, like uh, executing, executing your idea? And I think that people should take that from what we're doing here. Uh, it's been, you know, years since we've been talking about doing a podcast, but now we're executing it. So it wasn't just talk. Talk is cheap. Everybody knows that. If you have an idea and you think it's good enough to execute, walk the walk. That's all I'm saying. Because as we know from all the hate stalkers out there, Talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. That is true. Talk is cheap. Talk is very, very cheap. Very, very cheap. So was this little ass air conditioner. Cause that was cheap, but that's all talk. All talk. Because online it was all it was talk. Like one of those Shark Tank things. And people were commenting like, if I could give this less than one review, I would. <laughs> I told him that too. I was like, why don't we just spend the other 50 and get the one that's a little bit the tall uh, stand up one? He's like, no, give this one a try. I was like, all right. It seems like it's working really good. Not a waste of money. I'll put it on this side then next time. <laughs> I'm telling you it's not doing anything. But yeah, you don't have it tilted towards yourself. Do you see where the fan's tilting it? Yeah, that's why my feet are so cool. Here, open this up and I'll tilt it towards you and see if it makes a difference. <laughs> see? Oh. It works perfect. Damn, how long have we been sitting here? Oh, this feels good. Literally... She literally just did that. He set it up though. I was stuck here. Me that is literally that's so unfair that you're doing that. <laughs> and you could here. see the steam and the the nice cold air going towards you. It's working now, right? Damn. What do you call that? The Arctic ice. The Arctic air. Thirty nine ninety seven. It's thirty nine ninety nine. Is it 99? Yeah, where'd you get 97 from? You know how they like it. There's as seen on TV, they like to throw like zingers in there. Like thirty nine ninety three, flea market Montgomery. It's kind of like a mini ball. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Uh, you guys know what that is. You guys, you got anything else to say before we end this off here today? Any words of advice to your former self? To my former self? Yeah. Because that's the only person you can really speak to. Because everything that I say and I project is me talking to myself in the past. Like, execute your idea, idiot. Like, it, it could be a good idea. But, like, I was holding, I'm holding myself back. The only roadblock in your life is you. Oh, well, yeah. So, any advice to the former self? To the former self. Just put me on the spot. Honestly, if I had my life to do over and to do anything differently, I wouldn't do anything differently because where I am now is so important to me. Yeah, no, I wouldn't either because, you know, you need, like I was saying earlier in the podcast, you need the struggle to build character. So, to be honest, there's not really much I could say to myself that would put me in a better position than I am right now in life. So, I'm just going to say... Keep doing what you're doing, and I'm so proud of you. The only regret that I really have is not taking that cat out of the woods that one time. The what? The little black cat. The one that I saw? Yeah. Really, you dwell on that? Yeah. That's really sad. All the time I think about it. I said to get the cat. I know. But I'm just saying... This is what... Really? You never told me that. Yeah, it's sad. It's sad. Well, why didn't you get it? We got butters. I didn't want to take the cat away from the other cat. There will be more, baby. Don't worry. It's not about being more. It's just everybody deserves a second chance. That cat was living it out there, though. Somebody was taking care of those cats. The cat's 100% still there. We saw him, remember? And it had, you know, his mama and a bunch of other cats that lived there. So... So, yeah, I guess all we could take from this is uh, bet on yourself. Just bet on yourself because you're going to have to bet on something in life. And you might as well bet on yourself. That's how I feel. Like, the rea- the reality of it is nothing is, obviously, it's impossible to fly. Like, I couldn't just walk out of here and fly. But, like, everything that somebody else has already done obviously is possible because it's already been done by a human that is probably not that much smarter than you are. That's the reality of it. So like any idea that you have that you think is stupid or crazy, there's probably somebody doing it right now. So like why wait? I don't know. Just, just, I think go for it. Go for it. You got to go for it. Life is really, really short. I think a lot of people, I say this in roundabout ways all the time, just in different ways with different words. Life is really, really short. So, you know, you got to just do what makes you happy because in reality, we are just dying every single day. And it's, that's really sad that I have to remind myself of that sometimes to bring myself back down uh, when I get distracted by dumbass shit. But that's the truth. So that's just something I live by that's a little bit morbid. But if that's what I have to remind myself of, to stay grateful and humble and a good person and stand by my values, actually stand by our values and our morals, then so be it. Because it's better than living as an ungrateful asshole. Yeah, and I would say, you know, you have the freedom to dream, but we all know, or me and Sammy and our lawyer, Joel, know (laughs) greatly that our freedom to dream trademark has been stolen by David Beckham. That's true. So that's why, we had, four years that's why we had to trademark this baby behind us because <laughs> this right here, I might as well just be paying royalties to David Beckham, the soccer player, because he stole our logo. But that's a conversation for another time. That's uh, true. I just want to thank you all for watching. And don't forget to leave a comment and subscribe to the channel for a chance to win this extra wallet. Uh, You can get a discount on their items, too. If you use our code, it's going to be in the link below. Uh, We'll put a a discount code and a link to their site in the description bar. But without further ado, 
we bring to you the very first episode of Coffee Before Claims. And that went well. I think that went well. Let's do this, baby, baby. Let's play this outro song. What up? See you guys. See you guys next time. See you guys next time.